everyone. So welcome back to another episode of the Hello Spring podcast. I am your host, Stephen or Spring Sims, whichever works for you. But for today's episode, I'll be interviewing my good friend, Kayla Sims, or you may know her as Little Simsy on YouTube and Twitch. But if you don't know who she is, Little Simsy is a content creator slash Twitch ambassador who makes a variety of content based around the Sims franchise and other games on YouTube and Twitch. From the beginning, she's been inspiring millions of people around the world through the power of gaming, charity fundraising, and so much more. But anyway, all of her links will be down below in the show notes. And so let's go ahead and hop into the interview. Well, to start off the podcast, thank you, Kayla, for you know being on my podcast. I'm so excited to be able to talk no, with I'm you. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm just like, you have so much knowledge. You've been in like in this internet space for like five or more years. Yeah. And you just have so much like insight and knowledge and you're just a well, like well round, like wholesome, exciting person. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, for the listeners, if they don't know who you are, can you kind of uh, tell us about yourself? Well, my name is Kayla. I go by Lil Simsy on the internet. Uh, I've been making Sims videos on YouTube since like 2015, and I started streaming on Twitch in late 2017. Um, and I've been doing daily content on both those places for quite some time now. <laughs> That's a long time. It doesn't well, it's feel like you've been doing it just as long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been making Sims content for like a decade. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that number. It's like, I've been on the on YouTube making Sims Con for, for right. 10 years. Isn't it so weird to think about things happening 10 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> things were different on YouTube 10 years ago, though. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's well, wild. I made my first ever YouTube channel when I was 12. I used to make Littlest Pet Shop videos as a child. And I started that in, like, 2012. So <laughs> I've been on YouTube for a while, too. <laughs> but we don't we don't talk about that. We pretend no, no, that no, didn't no. happen. <laughs> yeah, we don't. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, so how, why did you, why did you decide Little Simsy? So my real life last name is Sims, which I think a lot of people don't believe, but it's true. (laughs) And so (laughs) Simsy was always like a nickname when I was a child, you know, like Little Simsy, like that was a thing that that was just a name people called me. And so when I decided to start making Sims videos, I was like, this is, I mean, I have it. Like, this is literally my name. Like, this is perfect. It works out really well. Like Kayla Sims making Sims content. I mean, (laughs) You were born for the I Sims, really was honestly. Born for this. <laughs> Literally. And now look where you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Full circle moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, what was your first impression of me? Okay, well, <laughs> honestly, Steven, you were probably the first like mutual Sims creator I ever had, like person that followed me back, you know? So I remember finding yeah. your channel and I was like, I like this guy. I thought you were so cool. And you obviously had, like, way more (laughs) subscribers than me. Like, I was, like, so impressed by you. And I followed you on Twitter, I remember. And you followed me back. And I remember being so excited about that. I was like, Stephen Springsteen followed me back. Like, I was so happy about it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I really liked you back then. (laughs) I always thought you were super cool. Oh, thank you. I I thought I was a very awkward, like, person back then Mm -hmm. because I've realized – Looking at looking back at my videos, I was literally yelling the entire time. Really? Like I don't. Yeah. Well, because I think my voice was going up like five different octaves, just mm-hmm. yelling yeah. into my microphone for no reason. <laughs> See, I feel Do like not know I why. was really quiet in my old videos. Like I was really shy, and I think my videos are awkward for that reason because I was like super quiet all the time. Mm. I don't know. And then well, you kind of like get into your comfort zone, and then you get better at it. But yeah. That's true. That is very true. Like the more you do it, the better you yeah, get. Yeah, exactly. I look back on videos from my dorm when I was living on campus and I like there's such a drastic change from like when I was living at home to when I moved to my dorm room because I was so scared to record with my roommates around. So I was so quiet back then. And it's like so <laughs> embarrassing for me to watch those videos back because I sound so weird. Oh my gosh. Same here. When I went to college, I'm like, I can't record. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just, I was very quiet and I'm like... I don't know what I'm doing. How do I? Well, it's so hard to like get up the courage to talk like when you know people can hear you because my roommates could definitely hear me talking to myself in my room. Like 100%, they could hear what I was saying. So I was so scared all the time. (laughs) Oh, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. It's, it's, it's definitely very weird. Like when you like first started your YouTube channel, it's like your parents could hear you talking to yourself and you're like, what is she doing in there? (laughs) And it's like a whole, 
and it's all over again, mm-hmm. moving to a different place. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, well, and it's like so much more embarrassing because the people that are around you are are not just your family, you know? Yeah, yeah. They have to, they have to adjust to all mm-hmm. that. <laughs> uh, weird times. Uh, but uh, I was scrolling through the DMs because oh, when I started like this uh, <laughs> this uh, podcast episode, I'm like, what was the first DM I ever sent to Kayla? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know. It was like years of yeah. scrolling, and. I don't know why I even asked you. Like, I literally said, would you be willing to donate one of the Sims 4 games for my one-year anniversary <laughs> giveaway? I'm like, why would I even ask a person that in the first place? I don't know what was going through my brain, Well, and also the fact honestly. that I didn't reply. I'm so embarrassed about that. Granted, I was... When did we send that? When was that DM from? Like, 2015. Then oh you responded, God. like, March 2016. <laughs> yeah, I remember responded months later completely unrelated but the thing is i was like i was in high school i didn't have any money so like i, I guess i just didn't reply but now, i looking back on that i feel so bad that i didn't respond to you oh no I'm it's so totally fine <laughs> oh well, my god! then gosh. i come back in march like months later and i'm like hey steven do you want to collab after i just completely ignored your last dm <laughs> like that's so bad and I went ahead like, okay, let's sure, let's work, let's collab. Totally fine. I'm excited. And I think the first collab we ever did was the traditional home. Yeah, the house build. Collab. Yeah. And I think the next one was like Max's match versus Alpha. Oh God, I forgot about that too. <laughs> the amount of like like I don't know, it was going on for years. And I kept on getting comments. I'm like, wait, what is going on? And then I realized, oh, wait, the collab. Now it's finally Mm -hmm. stopped. I'm like, good. Because people are now realizing, pick what you want. We Mm -hmm. don't care. Yeah. Because back then people were like, you can only choose one. Yeah, there really was that big like like, debate back then. Like, are you Max's match or are you Alpha? And it was like such a controversy almost, you know? Yeah, it was kind of weird, and I think now over time people have yeah people grown just don't up really care. And, <laughs> no, it's like I'm gonna have both in my game at this point. Mm-hmm. I really don't care anymore. It's fine. It's all content. <laughs> yeah, it's free exactly. Sometimes just find what you like, and honestly, a lot of people kind of like switch between them depending on like yeah. I don't know. It doesn't like it doesn't matter. It never did matter, but people were so no. like I don't know. They were so invested in their like team. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because I think. The Sims 3 was all alpha. Well, yeah, exactly. And then, and then like the Sims 4, like when it first came out, it was just alpha the entire time. And yeah. then, and then the game slowly actually came people out. people started making Max's match CC. So in the beginning, it was like only alpha stuff, right? Yeah. And it was like a yeah. lot of conversions from The Sims 3, too. So a lot of people had like all the CC they had in The Sims 3, I had in The Sims 4 also. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Yeah, I you forgot used to like download all, all the same hairs again, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like I need to have my regulars, mm-hmm. you know, all these things. Of course. And then. I was searching for, like, you know, you know that one CC creator, S Club, who made yes. those eyelashes? Yes. <laughs> I was like, are they going to convert them to The Sims 4? I'm like, I need the <laughs> eyelashes in my game. But then Kajoko, Kajoko, whoever mm-hmm. their name is, yeah. they made the eyelashes. Can never live without them. <laughs> oh, yes. My Sims are ugly without them. Yeah, honestly, mine too. <sighs> Isn't it funny how so there's, good. like, some CC pieces that literally everyone has? Like, just every single person has that same CC piece. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. those eyelashes, just everybody has them. <laughs> Everyone. It's like you can't live without them. You got to have them at all costs. Mm-hmm. Like if I deleted everything on my game, I would not delete the, the eyelashes yeah. at all. <laughs> I got to keep them. <laughs> For me, it's like UI cheats. I oh. I will not play the game without UI cheats anymore. I just can't. No, <laughs> no I cannot either. I like to micromanage my yeah, uh, Sims. I like to mess with their needs so much, you know? Like, I'm like, you know what? I want to I want to go out tonight, but my Sims are, like, a little bit too tired. Maybe I'll just put their energy up a tiny bit more <laughs> so we can yeah. go out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, also because, like, when you're making a save file, it's like you got to change everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so you really need those mods to, like, set everything up, you know? Almost definitely. Yeah. Uh, so your last name is Sims. Yes. And... When I found that out, I'm like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> she must be lying. Yeah, but no, well, I'm yeah, like, okay, everyone that's... thinks I'm lying about it. <laughs> I don't blame them. It sounds ridiculous. I remember this the first time that I ever had to like tell my name to the EA when they were trying to book my flights and stuff, you know, for that first ever Sims camp. When we actually when we first met at the City Living one, I obviously had to send yeah. like my information to them to book my flight for it. And I remember like them coming back and being like, I need your real name. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> 
I did. I'm not giving you the, a fake name for the flight. I promise. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, that was a time. I, I I remember you sent me like a DM at, like that, and like, wait, really? They don't believe you? Yeah. <laughs> It's like you must be faking. No, 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 not at all. God, did you imagine I like I lied about it when they were trying to book a flight too? Like, is it, what am I gonna do? Get to the airport with a fake ID? Like, that's not how that works. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, like, how long have you been playing The Sims? So I started playing The Sims in The Sims Three. I think I was a little bit late to the game compared to a lot of people in the Sims community. But I finally got it like early on in The Sims Three, like probably like 2010 or 2011, maybe. Um, cause I finally mm-hmm. convinced my mom to buy it for me. I, cause I always wanted it like my whole life and I played at my sim, my friend's houses before and stuff, um, that had like the Sims two and things, but I didn't play a lot. Um, and then when I was in middle school, I finally was like, mom, <laughs> I need this game. It's named after us. And she had this whole, like, well, you have to share with your brother, like this whole thing. And then I finally got the Sims three base game. Um, <laughs> but I remember begging for it for so long. <laughs> I wanted it so bad. I love the Sims three. I, do I, too. I kind of miss it. It doesn't run well on my computer at all. Oh, like it runs like hot garbage. I'm so sorry. I'm glad my PC can kind of run The Sims 3, which is lucky. Although, you know, kind of run The Sims 3. <laughs> it's not that great, <laughs> but at least it opens, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like every now and then, like every six months or so, I have like the urge to just build a house. Yeah. It'll take six months to build because I'm lazy mm-hmm. and I don't want to destroy my computer. So I right. just take my slow time <laughs> i mean it ends up being a suburban house all the time oh yeah so me too whatever i don't build anything else I, i'm not good at that i don't i can't do anything else <laughs> no suburbans are are easy it's what i've lived in all my life so i'm like i'm used to it it's what a house looks like in my brain i don't know how to build like modern looking houses i'm not creative enough to like come up with something <laughs> what? I just no yeah you are no sometimes i can make something but it's never that good <laughs> i don't i don't know <laughs> I've I've tried, but it it didn't look good at all. It looked like a big giant box yeah, with other things around it's it. It's just really out of my comfort zone. I I much prefer my little houses, my little suburban family houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite thing about The Sims Three? Oh, I don't know everything. I think because it's my my first ever Sims game, it has like a very special place in my heart. It's like very nostalgic, you know. So I I just I love every part of that game. I think. I really liked all the pop-ups they used to do. Like the little, like, for example, like with Generations, when it would pop up, like, oh, you're some of their first kiss at prom. Like, I used to <sighs> love that kind of thing. I thought that was so I much fun. I remember those. Oh, I miss those days. I miss being able to go to prom right? and stuff and go to graduation. Yeah, all <sighs> those life events were so much fun. Also, the CC worlds for The Sims 3. I love oh, yeah. download custom content worlds. Those are my dream. Right? I remember downloading uh, My Sim Realty worlds. Those yep. were great. Yep. <laughs> It's like, can I have that back, please? Do you know what? I literally was just playing with some of them like two weeks ago. I went onto that website and I downloaded like Alpine County or whatever. I like downloaded a bunch <gasps> of the classics and I was like playing in them. I was just, I downloaded like four CC worlds and just like went and toured around them like two weeks ago. Those were my worlds. I, I literally just played in those worlds all the time, uh-huh. make households and just lived vicariously through them right. and just <laughs> see what could happen. Like I just, oh, I love those worlds it's way too much. They were so much fun. All the builds were always so good. And it was so cool how they had like a mixture of like the city and like a suburban area. Like yeah. they, were just, they were big. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Because I even downloaded the one where they had like a university lot on yeah. there because like with The Sims 3, it was great. I loved the university, but I didn't like being stuck there. Well, and also the loading screen to get to the university world in The Sims 3. Like I swear it takes like 20 <laughs> minutes to get there in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it for me. And like, I think with the Sims, like just franchise in general with the university packs, like mm-hmm. Sims 2, it felt like it was too long. And then the Sims yeah. 3 was too short. Then Sims 4 is like a mixture between yeah. both, but more stressful. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> when that pack came out, I was we like, we were both still in school. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't need that, right? that stress, I need but I played it either way. I virtual homework too. <laughs> is it fair? No. <laughs> But it's fun, like, torturing your Sims through it. Oh, yeah, exactly. I like that it's kind of a struggle because I think sometimes The Sims is almost, like, too easy to make money in, you know? Yeah. So it's nice that it's, like, actually possible for your Sims to fail. And, like, it it happens, you know? Yeah. I think because the first time I I played it with Bob Pancakes and (gasps) he had – 
a kid, Iggy, and then he was also married to Eliza, oh. divorced them both. He ended up still, like, keeping his job. So he had, like, a, a nine-to-five job. He was going to school, taking care of his kid. Oh, my God. And trying to breathe and eat and sleep, but that didn't happen. Yeah. So he constantly worked on, like, his projects and stuff. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh no! But he got all A's, so oh, that's impressive. That's fine because it's hard to keep up on, like to keep on top of the homework and projects with university, especially like if you're actually trying to do other things. I swear, you yeah. could just like be playing and not have a job in The Sims and like not be able to finish your homework in time. Oh yeah, I mean, you don't like when you go to university, you do not have a social life. No, it's almost Sims or real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You kind of like have to make sacrifices in The Sims for your Sim to be able to be successful. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard, but it's worth it in the end, mm-hmm. though, because they get better jobs and better yeah. pay. So and it's just fun. Might be. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've I've seen in the past that you have played the other versions of The Sims, like Sims 2. Mm-hmm. What were your, like, thoughts about well, that? Well, you know what? I See, because I didn't ever play The Sims 2 when I was younger, I feel like it's it's hard to play older Sims games and, like, appreciate them as much as the person who, like, didn't play it back then. Because, like, Sims 2 came out when I was four years old, right? Yeah. So I didn't play it, like, back then, really. Um, and then, and I because I didn't have, like, older siblings that were playing or, like, cousins that were playing. Like, I was the oldest, you know? So I didn't really, like, mm-hmm. play it when I was a little kid. And then, like, coming to play it when I was, like, 18, you know? I, I thought it was fun, but I don't play it a ton. Like, I don't, like, go to The Sims 2 and pick it back up very often because I just, like, I don't have that nostalgia for it, you know? If I want to play an old Sims yeah. game, I pick up The Sims 3. I mean, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, because when that game came out, I was like nine? Yeah. Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine. 2004, two, mm-hmm. like it was nine. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about it either, but I still played it just because I'm like, ooh, it looks new. And I love The Sims. Uh-huh. I started playing like at the year 2000 and I was four years old. Yeah, see, you're like way more OG than I am with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I... I don't know. I think I just just love The Sims, and I'm like, I'll just play it just because, like, it's a great game. Well, yeah, but exactly. Kind of just explore different things, but then I got heavily invested into The Sims 2 like lore. Uh huh. And I was just like, I need all of this in my life. I love the drama. I love the chaos. And then <laughs> uh, it's it's so weird because looking at the timeline of the of The Sims, it's. It goes from like Sims three and then Sims one and then two and then four is yeah. like Yeah. Four is like its whole own world. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> yeah. Kind of weird a little bit, but you know, I, in some weird way it makes sense, mm-hmm. but doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like you just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you could change or add anything to the Sims, what would it be and why? Oh my. <laughs> That's a loaded <laughs> question. Are we talking about like packs? Or are we talking just... Well, like... Well, yeah. Because I think for The Sims 4, my dream pack is a university pack. We kind of just talked about that with, like, the... Or I said university. I meant generations. (laughs) Oh, that's embarrassing. (laughs) My dream pack is generations. We were just talking about, like, prom and graduation and that stuff, you know? I miss that so much. Like, I would love to have, like, more family-based gameplay for The Sims 4. Like, a pack that gives those life events that I miss so much. Yeah. I would love that as well. I think... Because, like, for me... And I think also, you know, like, I'm a family game player. Mm -hmm. So, like, having those family dynamics and aspects to the game really what would sell me the entire franchise in a whole. Because you get to focus not on just one, but all the life stages and kind of see them grow up as they get older, whether, like, they're a toddler or a teenager or or a young adult. Yeah. Because, like, that's the tiny piece that's missing. Because I miss the video camera from The Sims 3. Yeah, that was so much fun. I miss being able to kind of, like, take all the videos and then play it on the TV and yeah. like, they would have like these special moments and we so all gathered together. And I'm, I'm <sighs> a like big legacy type player in the Sims. Like I like to play with the same family for multiple generations, you know? And that's why yeah. it's like that kind of stuff is so important because you start with a Sim as a baby and then you like play through like their entire life until they have grandkids, you know? And it's just, yeah. it's nice to have like all those little moments that like document their life. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it definitely is. And I think, since we don't like have like a generations type pack, I just tend to take a lot of screenshots, mm-hmm. and I realize that I am just obsessed with my Sims family. Like yeah. I have, I think one particular family that I've only played probably for like a couple of years, and I kind of stopped because boredness happened. Yeah, but I think that 
if we end up getting like a generations pack, I would definitely like bring it back. Yeah, pick them and up specifically and stuff. Play it. Yeah. Would you bring back the Huntley <laughs> legacy? Maybe someday. That was I loved those Sims. I used to play with them on Tumblr. Um, yeah, I still have the save. That. I haven't opened it in a long time, but that would be fun to to bring back. I swear, I think I like <laughs> last played with them when Cats and Dogs came out. I remember like building them a new house for Cats and Dogs, and then like never playing with it again. <laughs> that was so long ago. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's 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 weird because like when you don't play a save file for so long, you get very scared that something's going to break. Yeah, right. It's like I have old mods in that save file that are probably messed up. Like, I don't know. And then you have yeah. the you have to like replace all their CC and things with new stuff if you don't have it anymore. And like that's annoying. So I just don't open it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I st- I, <laughs> it's not worth it. I opened up my very first save file in The Sims 4 oh and I felt so sad afterwards. I mean, when I like I started a, a let's play that was like 60 some odd parts or whatever mm-hmm. when the game first came out and my original sim died. I was fine, uh-huh. not really. At that moment I wasn't, but like now I'm fine cuz they <laughs> they're, they're time gone to get over and it. It. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and but when I reopened it I'm like, "Oh no." And then all my like one of my sims died that weren't supposed to die. I didn't save so I exited the game. Uh-huh. I'm like I'm not reliving that moment anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> I still remember, like, the very first song. Like, my Sim lived in Willow Creek on that 40 by 30 lot, yeah. like, right in that general section. And the first song they ever made was Cordell, My Love. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first song I ever remembered from a Sim that I created out of random, like, ah, oh, nostalgia. Yeah. I miss my Sims. I like thinking about my first Sims 4 saves. It's kind of fun to look back on that stuff. I opened my first Let's Play save kind of recently too that I haven't played in like five years, you know. And back then I used like Alpha CC, like I had Build CC everywhere. So I opened it up and all of my Sims were completely naked. Just not a single (laughs) item that I still had. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) It's scary Mm because I... I used to be a person like all alpha, all everything. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to go to Max's match and then alpha and then go back and forth. Mm-hmm. But all I knew is that I installed a lot of CC, like alpha build CC. Oh. And then my game would crash all the time because I would have too much. Right. And I was like, you know what? No more build CC for me. I'm never going to use it. Not going to have it. And now I'm just all cast and... <laughs> Yeah, I honestly, I kind of barely use custom content anymore. I used to be, like, really big into Max's Match CC, but then when I made my save file a few years ago, I, like, took all my mods out of my game, obviously, to make all those sims because I didn't want to use CC in it. And then I kind of just stopped using cast CC because of that. Like, I just got used to Mm. making sims with no CC, and then I never really started again. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. I I am a slow person when it comes to making sims or, like, anything. Uh And I'm like... How did you even do it? Like, the save you file alone is, like, a very big project. Yeah, I'm not as, like... It used to take me a lot longer to make those sims, so I was, like, trying a lot harder. But I'm not, like, big into create a sim. I never really have been. Like, I don't think I'm very good at dressing sims. I don't I don't think I have any, like, sort of fashion sense. So I always feel very, like, out of my element when I try to make sims. So I kind of try to, like, rush through it, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, I think for me, I think what takes me the longest is that I'm a person, like, I'm a legacy, like f- legacy family right. game player. Yeah. And I'm a person, I'm like, I want to be extra. I want to make <laughs> the past generations and like, I'll like make the great grandparents and the grandparents and like so oh, on and really? so forth. And then kill like the older generation mm-hmm. for like story purposes and build a graveyard and oh put them all God. there. So you like, <laughs> you prepare before you even start playing. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of fun. Cause like, cause like for me, like, I think it goes back to The Sims 2 that. I always loved, like, the family dynamic of things and the story and yeah. the memories and the history behind it all. I'm like, wait, I could do that in The Sims 4 because people say there's no, like, really, like, goodness to lore or, like, backstory to The Sims yeah. 4. And I'm like, that's kind of true, but not really true. You just got to use your imagination. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm just going to use my imagination and make it happen for yeah. me. And hopefully other people like it, but... I think that's one of my favorite parts of, like, setting up a new save file to play. And I always love to go in and, like, place all my lots and, like, build the houses and, like, set up, like, so-and-so is friends with this townie, you know? And, like, these are my neighbors. I like to set all that up. I have fun, like, playing God a little bit and, like, deciding who everybody's going to be friends with and then starting playing. I always like that (laughs) part. (laughs) It's always so much fun just to, like, just do whatever you want with no consequences. Mm -hmm. Ugh. 
Simpsons is just great. It's evolved over time, I would say, because like the first, what was it, 2014? Like when they announced, or no, no 2013 at Gamescom when they yeah. announced, and I'm like, wait, this looks so cool. And then we get the game, like, this is so cool, but so different. But we didn't know what to expect uh-huh. until like now, because I don't know if you remember, but back then we didn't have like basements, oh, toddlers, yeah. half walls. When the Sims we had 4 came out, it was a very different game. <laughs> I remember when I, because I was like super into The Sims 3 back then, you know, I, because I didn't have a YouTube channel yet when The Sims 4 came out. I was like really mm-hmm. anti Sims 4 before it came out because I was like, <laughs> we won't even have ghosts. There won't even be toddlers. <laughs> no pools, no basements. Like I was so mad. And I was like, I'm not going to play The Sims 4. <laughs> um, look at me now. <laughs> but I was, I was like so bitter back then about it. Oh. Uh. Those were the days. I think we just didn't realize how much we uh, appreciated The Sims 4 back then. Now we, like, really do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Uh, Not to make fun of it again, but remember the old map view? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was, it was all, like— Oh, it, it was so <laughs> ugly. Why did they do that? <laughs> I don't even know. I did. It, it didn't—it just—it was weird. Like, it was all one color. Yeah, it was, like, and all I think, blue and, like, grayed out. The lots were all grayed out. Yeah, like, depending on where your Sim lived, uh-huh. it would just, like— I'm like, why is it like that? It's I don't so understand. It makes so much more sense now that they're like colored in. I don't I don't know why they did it like that. I think we were all in beta or like prototyping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but now I mean like it looks a lot better. Like it's Yeah, they do way better map drawings now. Oh yeah. I love all the color. I love the the new addition that they added with the uh sub neighborhoods yeah i was so glad they went back and added them to all the worlds yeah i it helps with like storytelling and also like making a safe file yeah exactly it's just it's nice to have the little like sections and have like little backstories to them all because they have this neighborhood system like they might as well make the most out of it you know oh yeah of course um well (laughs) sims is a lovely game but here's the nitty gritty okay um so like, what led you down the path to make videos on YouTube? Like, well, why did you want I to? I was, like, majorly into, Sim, like, watching Sims videos back then. Like, because I, early on in The Sims 4, I only had my family's Mac. So I couldn't play The Sims 4 when it first came out, even if I wanted to. Because it came out for, like, PC in, like, September and then Mac in, like, February. So for those first few months, I really wanted to play The Sims 4 and I couldn't. And so, like, even before then, I was, like, big into Sims videos. Like, Life Simmers Generations Let's Play and, like, all that stuff. Yeah. I was obsessed. And then, like, when The Sims 4 was out and I couldn't play it, I was big obsessed with Sims YouTubers. Like, I used to watch so many people. I was, like, obsessed with everybody's videos. And I, like, obviously I had made, like, those little pet shop videos back when I was a child. (laughs) And I was taking, like, video production classes at school. And I was like, you know what? I could make Sims videos, too. Like, I I could be deligracy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so I, I started making them when I was like 16. I got a microphone on my 16th birthday as a present. And then I recorded my first video then. I remember that. I think it was, wasn't that the 100 Baby Challenge? No, it was a Let's Play episode. I had like, like Let's Play The Sims 4, my like classic Let's Play. And then like two weeks later, I started the Baby Challenge. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I think I found you like through the Baby Challenge. No, I found you through the other channel. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the little pet shop like the, channel. <laughs> yeah, because like the thing is, like I, I get emails a lot when people like comment on my videos, mm-hmm. which I should really turn that notification off because it's uh, That's a running out spammy. of storage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up, this all makes sense. I'm like, oh, that's Kayla. And I'm like, wait, what happened? And then I realized, oh, all that stuff happened. But now here you are. Mm-hmm. Um, not naming the channel because that's just no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, um, so I switched over to this one in like December. I started making videos on that channel in August on my birthday, right? And then I switched over to the one that I use now in December. Um, and I've been that was 2015, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> yay! I'm so glad that you never stopped because I think that you're what you're doing is just amazing, honestly. Well, thank because you. like, because like I I look up to a lot of people on the internet. Because I'm like, they do the same thing that I do. And I'm like, they're doing it so well. And I applaud that. I'm like, you go, like, you do you. <laughs> go after your adventures, your endeavors, your goals, your dreams. Thanks, Steven. Do what you got to do. That means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, like, 
like where you started and where you are now, I'm like, wait. I remember from her humble beginnings. Yeah. And now look where she is. And that's so interesting because back then, like, I remember I would like I was so excited that you followed me back on Twitter. Like, I just I remember looking up to you so much, and I've like known you for so long. This whole time I've been doing it, so that means a lot to me that you say that. Thank you. Yeah, so proud, so proud. <laughs> um, did you ever intend to take five years to finish the one hundred baby challenge? No. I- <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I first started, I was really slow because I when I first started the challenge, I was like, I'm not going to be like the other YouTubers. I'm going to actually like decorate the kids rooms and have a story for each child. And like that was my intention <laughs> back then, which is very naive and like very like I've had five babies and not 50, you know. So once I like yeah. actually got into it, I was like, never mind. I do not care about any of these people. <laughs> Just go away. <laughs> <laughs> but I took a really long time, like, early on in the challenge. Like, I probably had, like, 20 babies in, like, a year. Like, I was very slow yeah. when I first started. <laughs> I th- I think also with the fact that you were recording it mm-hmm. and, like, editing and uploading, it takes a lot longer. Yeah. Well, because so... you only play for, like, 40 minutes to an hour. Like, I would record it. And honestly, back then, I, like, barely edited my videos. I probably recorded for, like, 30 minutes and then just, like, uploaded it. Like, I probably didn't even cut anything out when I first started. So when you only play for like 30 minutes a week, like you're barely going to make any progress. Yeah. Uh, I, I've i tried the 100 baby challenge. I did it. I tried it multiple times, mm-hmm. but always like failed because I just didn't understand the, the trying children were just not for me. So I just yeah. ended up not doing well, the it. But then are I think. so annoying. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> so repetitive. Like, please because just you stop. have to do it for so long with so many kids. Like it just, it's so annoying. By the time you get to like part, like like 50 babies. I mean, you've been doing the same thing over and over again for so long and you're only halfway there. Oh yeah. It's like, please stop crying. I don't, I don't want to hear you're crying, please just. And then I was, because I was doing it for so long, I was trying to like switch it up with the new moms. Like when there was a new heir, I would like try and completely start over like with no money again, just to like have some challenge again. Cause once you start getting Uh really good at painting, as you know, you get really rich in the Sims. And so once your house is, like, super massive, like, what else is there for you to do other than just, like, take care of babies? So I would, like, each generation have a new mom do something new. Like, one of them I had be a kleptomaniac, and the only way that she could make money was by stealing things. And that was really fun. Because I, like, never played (laughs) that way before, you know? And then you just go to the goth family's house and, like, take their knight statues and then sell them. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's a lot easier because they're already rich. They don't need that stuff. Yeah, they don't need it. Steal from the rich. Give to me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh um i just think it's just easier that way like there's so many ways now to make money in the sims mm-hmm. than there was before yeah and baby challenges are a lot easier finished it in like seven no a year i finished it in a year because i was speed running i was oh not caring about the children at Still, all like a whole year though for one challenge is so much time it is. It's like once you stop stop caring about the kids yeah. and focus more on like the matriarch and like the money, then you're good. Uh-huh. The kids don't and matter. And also like the teenagers. And I do yeah. have the kids only in your house for like a very short amount of time. Like by the time they're teenagers, they're just out, you know? Like it's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to see them anymore. Yeah. No, I don't even put them in a household. I used to just like shift, click, remove from household. Like you're just gone. <laughs> go away <laughs> that's actually a lot easier because i kept on like moving them out of the house of the original way yeah and i was like i was just wasting time yeah i used to like <sighs> go and i would try and put them into like a nice family like all the other kids would live together in their own house and then i stopped caring and i'm just like you know what you can leave go go into the void you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> mcc will take care of you yeah. you're fine i've watched your videos for a very long time and you have a series called fixer upper mm-hmm. Hmm. Is that inspired by the show? Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I figured, because I'm like, wait, did she intentionally just do that? Make it up after the show? I'm like, interesting. No, I wanted I mean, to be HGTV. <laughs> that was my dream. And I was like, wait. And I think, like, back then, like, I wasn't, I don't know if it was on Twitter or not. I have no idea. But I I saw somewhere, someone said that Kayla's just the HGT, HGTV <laughs> a fixer-upper, but on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That is <laughs> like, my oh, dream. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> 
I mean, they need to hit you up at this point. Like, chop, chop. Yeah. We got things to do. I think my favorite <laughs> thing to do in The Sims is renovate houses. Like, renovate EA's builds, renovate, like, regular builds. In that series, like, people build, like, run down old houses on the gallery. Like, they'll make, like, cracks in the walls. Like, this house has been abandoned for a hundred years. Can you fix it, Kayla? And I, I love yeah. going in and renovating them. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's actually very, it, it is very fun to renovate houses. It's actually very therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Like, when you, like, really think about it, it's like you get to just delete every yeah. single item and then kind of put it all together. Especially like, with oh. those houses because people will spend like hours with debug, like meticulously placing all these little cracks and all these yeah. things. And then I just come in and delete all of it. And it's so satisfying <laughs> to watch it all disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've done it too. I'm like, oh no, I feel so bad. I'm like, wait, no, yeah, I gotta, like, I gotta you know, fix you this. You spent like three hours building this, and I'm just gonna delete it all right in front of you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard and seen mm-hmm. the struggles. I've realized you've had a lot of struggles in the past, mm-hmm. but I don't think you have any struggles now. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, <laughs> but like, what? Like, why did you decide to do daily content? Like, what made you do it? Like, that's a lot of work. Yeah. You know what? I think that back when I was in high school and I was first starting out, I just really, really wanted to make videos. Like, I just liked recording videos so much that I just kept doing it and just posted all the time. And then I kind of just didn't stop posting daily. Like, I kind of got myself into that groove and then I just kept going, you know? Uh, That makes sense because... I, I've tried, could not do it. Plus the thing at the time when I started this channel, I was in college and I had literally no time. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. Like my, all of my free time, I would just spend making videos. Like I would sit there on like the weekends and I would record on a Saturday, like seven videos. Like I would record like four parts of a let's play all in a row. And then I would, you know, like I just record a bunch of content when I had free time that, cause I was just me playing the Sims. Like that's what I wanted to do in my free time anyway. And then I'd have just like a bunch of backlogged videos that I could post throughout the week. Oh my gosh. And they weren't good videos <laughs> back then, but <laughs> that's how I would do it. I mean, now you have more like a, of a structure and mm-hmm. everything. It's much easier. Yeah. Huh. I need to get on that schedule because I am just all over the place today. <laughs> uh, Steven, you wild. do so much. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I do so It looks like I do so much, but in reality, it's like I'm doing all these things, but I'm actually like, a mess and not getting things done yeah, I at think the appropriate it just is time. that way behind the scenes for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what people don't know. Mm-hmm. People think, oh, it's easy. It's simple. I'll just record a video and upload and expect all these like things. Yeah. No, it's work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And it takes a lot of time. Uh, it definitely does, especially the editing part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think also like when it comes to like YouTube, there's like a pressure that you get from pe- from other people expecting you to be s- someone that you are te- you aren't technically who you are mm-hmm. and it can be kind of overwhelming and hard to kind of keep that like yeah i mean you know cuz it's almost like personality. you're playing a character online even if that character is you it's like sort of yeah. an idealized version of you you know who's like always happy and bubbly and excited and i love the sims and like that's that's all they really see from you a lot of the time in that kind of content and so sometimes yeah. you kind of like have to switch it on you know to like you might yeah. be having a bad day, but it's like time to go be little Simsy you now. Now you know, put the <laughs> put the smile on. Um, it's but. definitely very hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think like sometimes, like I was saying this before, like I, because like I started vlogging and I wanted to be able to kind of document things, and mm-hmm. I think what people don't understand is that you only get to see like one side of a person, whether it's like for an hour or two or three or yeah. thirty minutes or so, that they don't really get to see like who you really are and how you're really feeling because they right. only see some of you on social yeah, media and it's, when it's hard to understand. Only making the like, gaming content. Like it's hard to yeah. be like real about what, what you're going through and stuff when you're like, let's build a Sims house, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so they definitely really only see like that one part, that one side, like you're talking. About. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely hard. I, I've learned over the years that it's, okay to not be okay and Mm -hmm. it's okay to like show your emotions and it's also okay to like not always be happy when you're not happy and yeah it's okay to take a break I think that I feel really guilty about taking breaks online (laughs) I think like I 
it's the thing I've struggled with, for, struggled with for a long time where I've put this like pressure on myself to always have daily content and like always be uploading all the time. And I feel really mm-hmm. silly when it's like I'm having a bad day. I don't feel up to recording. Like I don't feel like I can make a good video today. Like I'm just not myself right now. And I feel really silly mm-hmm. being like, I'm too anxious to record a video. Like how that sounds in my brain, it sounds kind of dumb, even though it's not. And like, it's a, a reasonable thing. Um, and I feel yeah. very guilty about like admitting that to myself and especially like admitting it to people online. Like I just feel mm-hmm. silly saying that, even though it isn't a silly thing and it's a very valid thing to be feeling, but. Oh yeah, definitely. Like you, you should never feel guilty at all. Like yeah. honestly, I, when I like read on like online, like you're on Twitter, I'm like, is she okay? Like, take a break. Please just take a break. It's okay. It's fine. We'll be here when you return. Yeah, I know. But then, like, it's, like, it's also, like, the idea, like, you leave and it's, like, everyone's gone. Yeah. And it's, like, literally the crazy thing. And I think that's what people need to know. It's, like, yeah, you run even, like, like, when you take a break, mm-hmm. it's... There's, people are still there because you have all these tells us scenarios thing. in your head like if I take a break they're all going to disappear like I'm going to let everybody down they're going to hate me like but nobody actually yeah. feels that way you just worry no. in your head that you're letting people down even though like nobody cares if you take a week off of streaming like they'll be okay they'll be there when you get back um yeah it's just hard to justify it in your head you know yeah most definitely especially when it's like your job and everything mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to like understand that but I think now that we're all like in a new year and it's like a new everything. We're starting to realize that we can't always control everything Mm -hmm. and that's sometimes okay. And Mm -hmm. now we're like, we're feeling better each and every day as time goes on. I would hope so. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) You have a very, I would say you have a very busy schedule, honestly. Mm -hmm. Just like because you upload every single day and then you stream like five times a week for like three hours and everything and then you have like all these other things happening. Yeah. Like do you see like Keeping a schedule and like pre-recording helps you like manage your yeah, time better. You know what? I've found that I really prefer to be ahead on videos. I, it doesn't always work out that way. Like sometimes things come up and I like don't record on a certain day or whatever. But I found that I like to try and be at least like two or three days ahead on recording because then I feel a lot more in control <laughs> of what's happening. Yeah. So I like to record like sometimes I'll record like two videos a day um, for like half of the week or something so that I like have content ready for every day in case something happens mm-hmm. and I like you know can't record that day or whatever like maybe my internet goes out and I can't do something at least I've got like a, a backup plan you know yeah that's smart mm-hmm. I used to do that not anymore I just upload whenever but that's also not a good thing yeah but well, you know what works best um, for you yeah that's true like you know your own self yeah and I, I like having that structure and that schedule of like I'm gonna record on Monday Tuesday Wednesday and I'm gonna do these things that day like I just I like having that structure prepared because then I feel like more in control of everything yeah you know yeah it's a lot easier that way honestly mm-hmm. Yeah. Having a schedule, like time management, like if people are like wanting to like get into like making videos, the key thing is always like having a schedule for like for yourself, whether mm-hmm. it's like daily, biweekly, weekly, monthly. Yeah, it's just like setting that goal of when you want to be able to post and what you want to be posting. It helps to have like a plan, you know? Yeah, it definitely does. I think the key thing is just have a schedule, mm-hmm. honestly. And again, it really depends on like what what you kind of want to make and also like how you function and what works best for you. Because for me, I like a very rigid schedule, but some people don't work well under that kind of pressure, you know? Um, yeah. So I think it helps just to figure out what works best for you and then run with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And like, would you say that like over time, the more you've like you've made videos and the more like content you've like made for like different platforms Mm -hmm. would you say you got more more confident or like oh 100 percent. I think when I compare how I felt about myself and like how I presented myself when I was like oh granted I was like 16 also when I first started so that doesn't help (laughs) because all teenagers are super (laughs) awkward and uncomfortable with themselves but when I compare like how I felt when I was like 16 to how I feel now I feel like a completely different person I feel so much more comfortable in my own skin you know and I think that being on camera and like being open about that kind of stuff online has really helped me. Oh, that's good. Because, I yeah, the way people see you and the way you see yourself is, like, similar, mm-hmm. I would say. Like, you've definitely you've grown a lot and you've gotten, yeah. you've grown in your confidence oh, well, and everything. And me and you were both from an era on YouTube where people didn't really do face cam videos for, like, gaming yeah. content. Like, The Sims, there was never face cam in The Sims <laughs> videos back then. No. At all. And it sort of changed like very now. Rarely. Like, a lot of us 
like mostly do face cam on our videos not everybody but like it's pretty common to see face cam on sims content now um yeah and so i like back then i was so terrified to show my face online like i was convinced that if people saw my face they're all gonna unsubscribe i was like they're gonna think i'm ugly i'm gonna get hate comments like i remember when i did my face reveal like crying all day and all night about it and i still to this day have never read the comments on that video because i was so scared about what they would be (laughs) I remember that day. I'm like, oh, wow, Kayla, hi. That's that's you. I was like, that's cool. Because it's like, it's always interesting to see like, who's behind like the voice or yeah, behind, the, behind the channel. The camera there. <laughs> yeah. But then all at the same time, it's like, they are a living human being. They don't even have to, they don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also like me and you, like we're in the same like position. And it's like back then people would expect you to do certain things, but you didn't really want to do it. But then you were like forced to do it. Mm-hmm. And then. It's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and then sometimes people forgot that we're living human beings and we have lives and yeah. we have emotions that we go through There's every day. That behind the camera. <laughs> you yeah. <mentioned>. And <laughs> it's definitely very hard to uh, get through that. But now it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Hate comments, delete or ignore. It's definitely a lot easier to brush off these days. Sometimes it still gets to me. I hate to admit it, but sometimes that kind of stuff still gets under my skin. I wish that I was, yeah. like, I wish I was a little bit better about brushing it off. Most of the time it's like kind of funny, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But sometimes they post a comment and it really, it gets to me a little bit. Yeah. Same. I, I don't like hitting comments that are like towards like hate. Yeah. And when it's like towards me, it's like, oh no. You know, when they post like, like a paragraph about what they think like they don't like about you. And they, like, oh put my time and gosh. effort into it. That kind of cuts deep, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I I don't want to. Like, <laughs> that stuff is awful. I feel like it's one thing to brush off. Like, someone being like, haha, you're ugly in Twitch chat. It's like, yeah, okay. And then it just scrolls away and whatever. It's fine. But when they put, like, yeah. time and effort and thought into, like, disliking you <laughs> and here's why, that, that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what did I do to you? It's like, I did nothing wrong. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it's like... So whatever, goodbye. It's like, mm, yeah, time to move on. But I think that also goes to my next question. Okay, <laughs> is that the reason why you kind of move like instead of like streaming on YouTube, you went to Twitch because of like the chat just scrolling through? And well, I think it's a there's a couple reasons I started streaming on Twitch. One, I used to like watch a lot of Twitch streamers. Like I was big into watching Twitch. And I always wanted to stream, but I just did not have good enough internet at my parents' house. Like, it was not physically possible. And so when I went into my dorm room mm-hmm. in college, I had, like, the best internet, like, 100 up. Like, I was great. It was great. Oh, yeah. So I was able to stream from my dorm room finally. So, like, I was, like, I would have started sooner if I could have. I just, like, couldn't stream. Um, and I started streaming on Twitch because I, like, wanted to sort of have, like, my eggs not just in one basket. You know, I wanted to have, like, a second platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also just liked Twitch. And I still do to this day. And I think yeah. now I kind of think that streaming on YouTube would be a little bit too chaotic, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of chaotic over there because I started streaming on like YouTube for like maybe two times. Yeah. Like, and then I was like, oh, gosh, no, I can't what do it anymore. What was that experience like? Do you like the YouTube streaming platform at all? I mean, back then, like it was, I think, 2015 or so. Oh, they just didn't so. have anything. Yeah. So it was kind of like hard to kind of figure out what you're doing like it had the generic you know live streaming on youtube um aspect um for the most part it was actually okay it seemed pretty simple without all all, like the bells and whistles like the super chat and all those other things it's uh it was just normal and easy and i felt very comfortable over there because i was yeah it was uh a smaller audience and now it's uh not like that anymore (laughs) yeah i feel like youtube streaming is just in general kind of worse there's just like less like they don't have clips like they don't have sub gifting like there's not the same like raid community that we have on twitch yeah i think it's just like honestly i think it's kind of harder to grow as a youtube streamer but i guess i don't stream on youtube so what do i know (laughs) (laughs) well i found out because i am a techie person Mm -hmm. i like sign up for literally everything no wonder my my email is always spammed, <laughs> but I found out that YouTube is like implementing clips yeah, I saw into a tweet their thing. About that. It's about time. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm like, so I want to know. I think that makes such a big difference. Like not having clips. I know it might seem like a little thing, but that's such a great way for people to grow. Like you'll like clip little parts of streams, like funny moments, and share them with people. Like that helps. Oh yeah, a lot. And I think not having that is a big problem. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I think it's it's easier. Could kind of like look back at those moments mm-hmm. of 
when you like streamed or when you made that video and kind of look back at like, oh, that makes sense now. Because half the time I forget everything Mm -hmm. of what I said in like videos or streams. Oh yeah, I don't know what I talk about in my videos. (laughs) Sometimes the comments will be like quoting me and I'm like, what? (laughs) What are you on about? (laughs) It's like, I'm not looking back at the video. Like I don't want to look at that Uh timestamp. No. So it's it's very weird, but I'm so glad they're implementing like the clips and hopefully it'll like change. But I would never stream on YouTube because I just I don't I I mm, no. I'm a I'm no. a Twitch kid these days. I'm a big Twitch fan. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on like we've been on Twitch for like five yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. No. Long time. Four? I've been on Twitch since twenty seventeen. Yeah. Oh yeah, same. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Oh <laughs> time flies. Uh I feel like Twitch as a platform has definitely like, helped us in many different ways, mm-hmm. like personally and professionally, but also like it just, it's changed over time and it's yeah. helped and so many different people. You know what is so people. cool to see how the Sims community is growing on Twitch? Like there yes. are so many Sims partners now and that's so exciting because back like in the day, there really didn't used to be that many like people that streamed exclusively the Sims, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's super cool to see how many Sims partners are are like succeeding so much on Twitch right now. Yeah. I was like, wait, there's so many of my friends already like making Sims content and succeeding mm-hmm. and doing the thing like, oh, what will this year bring for us today? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, but I love I'm the just Sims so community on proud. Twitch. I think it's super cool. Yeah, I'm so proud. Like, I think with the Sims community in general, it's like it's we're a very close niche community, yeah. but we're very uh passionate about a lot of things and we (laughs) yeah (laughs) and we we definitely express our opinion about a lot of things and kind of share our uh interests of the sims and like through videos or streams or whatever and it's so nice to see how it's grown Mm -hmm. over like the past six years especially with the sims 4 i would say like even though people say the sims 4 is like you know lackluster and weird (laughs) You would have to say that the the community has definitely become more creative yeah. in a sense. Yeah, definitely. It's like stories, videos, challenges, and like what? <laughs> there's Where always was so this much back then? cool stuff going on these days. It's pretty fun. Yeah, but there's so many people that are so active in the Sims community. I mean, there always has been, but I think this it's been growing so much. Oh yeah, definitely. I I think it's definitely it's a, a lot better yeah. than it was like four or five years ago. Because back then, not many people made content about the sims whether it was like i knew it was like james curtis queen yeah uh christina jen like i know those people made content but nobody else did it was like a very awkward time yeah and the early days you know. for the sims on on the internet but it's very different now yeah, yeah very i would say it's very saturated mm-hmm. now like in a good way and also a bad way sometimes yeah i think that it really helps that there are so many people doing so well because like one people one people person going up like brings everybody up with them you know so it's super cool mm-hmm. to see everyone succeeding like especially on twitch because it's been growing so much on twitch it's so cool to yeah. see so many people succeeding with streaming the sims oh yeah i i, I like it i like to see it i like yeah. seeing people grow like my whole intention of just like internet whatever is like seeing people follow their dreams like I've been like that <laughs> since I was a little child yeah. before I made videos and like I never expect anything in return I just want to like help other people mm-hmm. that's my whole thing you're just you are a very friendly just kind good-hearted person Steven I think you are a very good friend thank to you. have <laughs> thank you I because like people I've I've learned over the years and seen that I people think I was using people I'm like that's not the case no people no think no you were using people yeah because like they would like people thought I was using you at first and people thought I was using somebody else because they had a higher oh, subscriber count but that was like years me. ago <laughs> yeah but also the weird thing too is like people compared me to other people because I think at the time we pretty much all sounded the same Mm -hmm. like fast talking or whatever i'm like okay well that's it sucks that people get like pitted against each other like that because like behind the scenes i feel like we're all just friends who all happen to make sims videos (laughs) you know like no no one's like using each other we're all just like hanging out making sims content like i i I never thought you were using me in any way (laughs) okay good i I can't even (laughs) imagine that so yeah that's good (laughs) because sim kids are very yeah, aggressive. I'm sorry if people ever accuse you of that kind of thing because I know I know you oh, have good intentions, no. Stephen, with everybody. Oh no, this was like early, yeah, like, the, the good years old ago days. when, like, <laughs> yeah, because like when uh YouTube was in a weird spot mm-hmm. of just anything, it was just 
trolls. Yeah. But that's just, you know, that's life. We've grown. We're adults. <laughs> Ugh, it's so weird. I don't like being in my 20s. I'm not ready. Yeah, I'm still in my early <sighs> 20s, but it's kind of weird to me, too. Yeah, I'm going to be turning 25 in like a couple of days and I'm going to have a quarter life crisis. <laughs> I'm ready. It's <sighs> fine. You're only 25. I, I understand <laughs> that though. I mean, I'm 21, right? But you know yeah. what? I have known you for so long. The fact that we met when I was 16 years old, like I really have like grown up with you almost. <laughs> that is wild, actually. Yeah. To think about, can like, wait. We met in 2016, and now mm-hmm. it's 2021. That's yeah. a long heck in time. Long time. <laughs> oh gosh, Sims events, the drama. So wait, the tea. Was, what was your first ever Sims camp event? Mine was uh, get together. Oh, so you were? So, I went to the first one. Mine was city living. Was my first one. So that was the third expansion pack. Yeah, and they didn't have one for get to work, right? Or did they? No, they did. Oh. No, yeah, they yeah they had one for get to work because I remember Molly made a video about oh, it. Oh yeah, but it was like way smaller back then. They would invite like ten people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and then they had like a Sims Four one and all that stuff. Yeah. And then it got bigger over time, and then it just got more. Chaotic, I remember but... being so nervous about that first event because I thought everybody knew each other already. Like, so I was like, I'm I'm coming into this as this like newbie who doesn't know anyone, and I was only seventeen. Like, I was super nervous about that, and I was like flying all the way to California, you know. Um, yeah that was a really good time it was definitely very weird honestly like my first time was I was very nervous mm-hmm. extra and chaotic and I was still making content and still new to it and like yeah. using my voice because before I never recorded anything with my voice or oh, edited wait stuff like that you got invited to a sims camp before you made like voice videos oh no 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 it was like a year after oh, like okay. when because it was 2016 yeah, 2016. Mm-hmm. And I got, like, I made my channel in like, 2015. And right. like, that couple of months, I remember because I made a create a sim. I was heavy. Like, I was, I love making sims. And uh-huh. I made a, a sim about Jen. <laughs> and I remember she shared that video. And I think I was just like social media crazy, tweeting the sims, adding the sims, yeah. everything. <laughs> And all I know, I get a DM from The Sims saying, we want your email. I'm like, what? Oh, my like, okay. God. <laughs> Didn't think anything of it. And then all I know, I get an email saying all these different things. I thought it was a spam email at yeah. first. It was in big capital letters, bold, highlight. I'm like, this looks scary. I didn't think it was real. I almost ignored it too mm-hmm. completely because it was for Sims Can't Forget Together. Because um, well, it sounds like it's fake, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you're inviting it's me? Like, <laughs> it's like you're going to fly me to a place that I've never been. Like, who yeah. are you? It was Sim Guru Drake. Um, yeah. I love remember her, her DMing me and like asking for my email to put me on that mailing list. Um, and then, yeah. like, pretty soon after that, I got my first ever, like, early access code. I got backyard stuff early. And that was, like, the uh, best day of my life. I was, like, crying. It was great. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, my gosh. Wait, was backyard stuff the one with the sliding thing? Yeah, like the water slides. Oh, my gosh. I remember that day. That was horrifying because <laughs> all I know, it was summertime and I was working and I already had recorded my video and everything. I had it scheduled, uh-huh. but it went up before the embargo oh. and I nearly just lost my mind because I thought I was going to get sued. Oh I still think God. that every time. I'm so because... sorry that happened to you. I mean, they probably didn't care, right? Oh, no. Like they, was... they DM, Well, it was fine. They yeah. DM me saying, can you take down your video? Um, because after uh, before the embargo and everything, oh yeah, totally fine. I was having a major panic attack. Oh god, that I day. can imagine that's so um, scary. <laughs> and then people were like tweeting me and all this stuff. And then I remember I went on the forums like a couple years afterwards. I was scrolling through to find my name. All I know, did, did you hear Spring Sims release backyard stuff early? Oh, da da da. I'm like, what in the no world? I have no memory of that happening. I'm so sorry. That must have been so stressful. It was. <laughs> I still, to this day, on embargo days, I, like, wait until everyone else posts. I, like, refresh my sub feed until I see the first one. Then I'm like, okay, I'll go. Even though I know the embargo is at noon or whatever, I sit there and I keep refreshing, waiting for somebody else to post before I do because I'm too scared to mess up. Oh, same. I usually, <laughs> like, wait a day, but, like, after because I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it this day. I'm <laughs> not going to happen. I'm going to be safe the next day. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But... Definitely, like, I think the more we've grown over time with, like, YouTube and, like, just Twitch in general, just social media, Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's gotten more stressful because, like, contracts and stuff. Uh I'm like, oh, no, embargoes. (laughs) 
pain. I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's alone. hard to like, it feels like we're running, well, because we are running a business now, right? But it's so yeah. different from when we started. We're just like hanging out, making Sims content. And now it's like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to read and deal with these contracts. <laughs> I don't know what it's I'm doing. It's kind of nerve wracking. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's why I was like, I need a lawyer. I need all these things. And so I was like, I'm going to get an LLC. And so I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a good Have decision. you done that yet? Yeah, I have. Oh, nice. <laughs> good. Nice. I, I'm literally, <laughs> we are business professionals mm-hmm. here. Business and owners? I, <laughs> yes. I was like thinking, what would I do? Because I was like trying to figure out, I now have an LLC Mm -hmm. and I was like, I need an editor. I need all these things and all that jazz. Would you say like Dan helping you edit your videos has helped tremendously? You have no idea how much of a difference that made in my life, my senior year of college, because I um, was trying to graduate early. So my senior year, I took like a bunch of extra classes. I had a really, really rough course load last year. I graduated last April. Um, and I knew mm-hmm. I was like, there is literally no way that I can do this and also like edit my videos and record and stream every day. Like, I, I don't think I can do that. And so my boyfriend, Dan, has a film degree and he had just graduated and he was like, he needed a job or like some way to earn money. And I was like, I need help. <laughs> what if we tried <laughs> out like you editing some of my videos sometimes just to like help me have a little bit more time to like function, you know, um, mm-hmm. and it worked out really well. And he still edits my videos, which is very good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. I'd say, like, having help is definitely a good thing to have. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like, learning to, like, delegate a little bit, you know? Yeah. Like, it's definitely, like, I would say better that way. Because I think editing, especially d- depending on what type of video you're doing, it's definitely very easy and hard. Mm-hmm. But also, it's like, ooh, and it's how am I going to do all of really this? Really time consuming. And I was really struggling, like, keeping up with it and, like, like being in school full time. I did it for the most part. But then my senior year, I was like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way yeah. that I can manage this. I, I need some help. Um, so it worked out. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be working well. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely tremendously, you know, gotten better. Mm-hmm. I would say, like, I mean, before your videos were great, but I feel like, you know, this is like a like, yeah, step up. I think they're better know? now having him because he can spend more time on it than I can, you know, especially then, like my when I was like in school, I, I didn't have mm-hmm. the time to like put into editing my videos well, you know, Um so him being able to do it, like, and him having more time to, like, actually put into it has really helped. And also having an editor who, like, knows me so well, it's, I feel like mm-hmm. that helps as opposed to, like, hiring a stranger or something. Because oh, he, yeah. like, knows me and my content and what I would want really well already, you know? That's good. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So would you say, like, there's pros and cons to YouTube and Twitch? You know, I I think there's always pros and cons to platforms. I think I really really like streaming on twitch and like we said before i I probably wouldn't want to stream on youtube and they kind of serve Mm -hmm. different purposes for that reason you know yeah Um, and there's things that i like about streaming and i like about making videos that are completely different um i like the community that you have on twitch you know i like being able to interact with people real time like it's just it's really fun to stream it feels like you're just hanging out it doesn't feel like you're like making something like this finished piece of perfect content to then release it just feels like you're just hanging out you know yeah it's a lot it's a lot better because i think it's you don't have to be so cookie cutter perfect. Yeah. It's like you just real and There's raw. There's almost a lot it's more easier. pressure on like recording and making videos that streaming doesn't really have because it feels like you're going on to hang out with people, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just think Twitch is just easier for streaming and YouTube is just easier for like pre-recorded videos yeah. and other things. They serve different purposes, but they're both good. <laughs> Most definitely. I've recently saw a couple weeks ago or like, I don't know while back ago, that you love charity (laughs) and your favorite charity organization is St. Jude. Like, why do you, why did you choose to fundraise for St. Jude? So um, I've, I started doing a St. Jude charity stream back in like the spring of of 2020. Um, And I like, I've done a bunch of charity streaming on Twitch before that. Um, I was like raising money for like the American Cancer Society and stuff like that. Um, And obviously Mm -hmm. like (laughs) um, my dad has cancer and he got diagnosed when I was like 14. Um, and so I was like trying to do fundraisers for like cancer based charities, basically, um, kind of Mm -hmm. because of that. 
Um, and obviously, like St. Jude does so many good things, helping so many kids. And that means a lot to me. And so I was like, you know what, I can do this. I can I can do a big charity stream for St. Jude um, because what they do is so important and so helpful to so many families. They make it so that people can get treated for free. You know, like it's so important to not have to worry about like how you're going to pay for your child's life saving treatments. And so like that mission means a lot to me. And so I started fundraising for them on Twitch. And then we raised like $200,000 for them on stream last year. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, wait, that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> like you literally gave so many kids a second chance at life. Yeah. It's literally insane. I, oh, I'm so proud. I, I cannot believe that. Like I, I, obviously I know that I have the ability to do like successful charity streams on Twitch because it's happened before, but I never mm -hmm. go in with like high expectations. Like I come on stream with a goal of like $5,000 for the stream and I'm like, hope it goes well. And then somehow we raised like a couple weeks ago, I did a charity stream for Feeding America and I set the goal at 5,000 originally. And in my head, that yeah. was reasonable. <laughs> and then we raised $32,000 that day. Which is just like beyond my wildest dreams. You know, I, I, I cannot fathom how that is possible. <laughs> it's wild. Like you like you go into it like thinking, okay, seems fine. But then you never expect to go like a go above and beyond mm -hmm. with that goal. And it's like it's wild to see like the viewers or there's like anyone. It's like Yeah. What? Where did you where how did this how happen? Is this possible? <laughs> I, I feel so lucky to be in a position where I can do stuff like that. Like the charity streams mean a lot to me. Like I feel very yeah. grateful that I can give back like that. Um mm -hmm. and it's really cool that I have such a like generous community that is so excited about it as well, you know? Yeah. It's it's definitely nice to be able to like when you're on like social media or like just in quote unquote influencer, very awkward word, <laughs> um, that you're able to use your platform for good, like for something else besides like mm -hmm. yourself or something or like just something that's good, you know? Yeah. Sometimes I feel a bit guilty that like I have a lot of followers online. Like I, I just, I don't really understand like why me? Like what, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just any other person, you know? Like I don't always see like why people would pick me. And so I am really glad that I have like the ability to give back like that online. I think I like owe it to people, you know? I think the reason why people like pick you just because like you're very honest and kind and you tell, I would say you tell like it is sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like people can relate to that. And I think that's what resonates to people to why they pick you for like certain things yeah. or give you things or fly you to places yeah. or or anything at all. So like I think it's just because like you are real and that's what people want to see, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, from a viewer standpoint, I, I see it. I mm -hmm. see you're very like, you're just you. Thank so. you. <laughs> that means a lot, yeah. Steven. You were very nice to me. <laughs> I'm... I try to be, I try to spread positivity one day at a time. You're really you know? good at that. You're a, a very good person to have around in the Sims community, I think. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just like such a, a positive like force and just this like light to have around, you know? And I, I really mm -hmm. appreciate that. <laughs> you're welcome. I have a few more questions. Okay. We've been talking for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you and Dan are dating and it's mm -hmm. long distance and it's very stressful, yeah. very chaotic. <laughs> um, I would say from like a, from a viewer standpoint, I would say that you have your life together <laughs> and you seem to have everything working out well, well for you. Well, I'm very glad it appears that way. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, like, how do you like do it all? Like, how do you separate like your personal life from your online life and social media and all that stuff? Because that's just a lot. I don't really but know if I have much of a personal life outside of social media, which is probably not a good thing. Um, <laughs> but I spend so much of my time online, you know, like I make so many, like I stream for so long and I make so many videos. Like I, so much of my day is spent like on social media and, and like sharing it with people. Um, and also mm -hmm. all of my friends are like internet friends. My boyfriend is online, like he lives in a different country, you know? Um, and obviously he's just like only an online person, but I haven't seen him in a long time because of the pandemic. So like my entire yeah. life, is online <laughs> and sometimes I have a hard time like separating myself from that you know um mm -hmm. but I I've taken steps like I like deleted the Twitter app off my phone a few months ago and that helped yeah because now the first thing I do in the morning isn't like getting on Twitter and like stressing about things I'm seeing on Twitter you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I need to do that 
I am getting to the steps of deleting apps off of my phone mm-hmm. because I literally have every single social media app out there. Yeah. It's not great. Yeah. It's a problem. I like I don't want to spend so much time obsessing over socials because like you know we have all these different platforms to have accounts on and to run and I don't like stressing about it so much like I I wish that I didn't stress about them so much so I've been trying to like you know only go on Twitter on my PC (laughs) so that it yeah I don't know then it's kind of separate the one social media that I'm big into is reddit I have like because it's not like Lil Simsy you know I I don't really post yeah I just like read reddit posts but that way it's mm-hmm. kind of separated from like my like social media like sims work life i say work kind of in air quotes but that way it's like a separate thing i can like go on there and read dumb stories and have it be completely unrelated to the sims <laughs> that's actually kind of a, a refresher yeah to like get away from that because mm-hmm. when like i think a lot of people what what they don't realize is that if you continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over for like so long mm-hmm. that you'll eventually get burnt out yeah and it's like you got to have something that like you can call yours and separate from like that work yeah. side of yourself. Yeah. I mean, like you and I, we love The Sims, but we also like live and breathe The Sims. <laughs> like yeah. everything we do is The Sims. So sometimes it's nice to be able to turn it off for a second, you know? Yeah. That's why that's why I go, I go on TikTok and just scroll through Yeah, yours is my TikTok, 40 page. mine is Reddit. <laughs> I'm on my TikTok 40 page. too, but... Yeah. It's weird. I... Social media is a, is a very weird, weird thing. I don't understand it. There's too many apps to, like, <laughs> be on, and it's like, I it don't need to be on everything. It makes me feel like I'm getting old when I feel like I don't know how to post on social media. Like, I'm like, I don't know how to make TikToks. Like, I, I'm on TikTok, but I don't, like, feel the desire to post TikToks, and it makes me feel old sometimes when I'm like, I don't know how to do TikTok like you kids, even though I'm only 21. <laughs> I don't understand it. I've tried. I'm like, I'm going to stop. I can't do it no more. Uh, But I I think that TikTok is a new, you know, Mm -hmm. app for everyone. But not really. It's fun. I just don't know if I'm kind of posting on it. (laughs) Oh, I don't post. I just scroll. Yeah, exactly. I mean, my For You page right now is just all about WandaVision. Oh, classic. I haven't seen it. (gasps) You have to watch it. Steven, I have to tell you a secret. I've never seen any of the Marvel movies. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my God. You have to watch them. They're really good. Tra- well, okay. Granted, s- the movies are great, mm-hmm. but sometimes they're like two, three hours long and you have to sit through all that. Yeah. But I don't know. It's it's a lot. I, I mean, really with Disney Plus. Them. I have no excuse. You should. You should. It's like embarrassing. You should watch them together. <laughs> we should. That would be fun. <laughs> I, yeah, because it's because I think that was like with what I like about Disney Plus the most with Marvel mm-hmm. is that they have it in chronological order, like oh. based on like the phases, but also like the timeline of what the movie is set in. Like the first one is Captain America, the first Avenger or whatever. Yeah, because like based on like the nineteen forties, twenties, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it goes down the timeline, and I love that. It's yeah, so no, good. I think that would help because part of it now is that I haven't seen any of it, and so it's kind of overwhelming. I'm like, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to get into this. Like, I'm super out of the loop. So I feel like that would be very helpful for me to be able to have them put in order for me. Yeah, because I get very confused because there was a spreadsheet that I, I looked at. I'm like, okay, which one do I watch next? How do I do all this? Like, yeah. when it lays out for you, perfect, <laughs> easy. You need a spreadsheet but. for your movie watching? <laughs> It's a lot. I watch so many TV shows. Like I, I'm still watching like Grey's Anatomy, mm-hmm. and I'm on season six, no season seven. And I finished Criminal Minds. I finished it already. I'm watching Criminal Minds again right now. Again? Yeah, I watched like the first like eight seasons in high school, but I'm watching it again. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a, it's a great show. I, like I mean, Minds. I love it. I also watch. Do you watch it on? I watch on Netflix. Oh, they don't have the other seat. They don't have the last three seasons. Oh, do they on not? There. No, I had to eventually watch them on Hulu. That's where the last three oh. are on. Well, I'm only on season kind two of again, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, we'll, well hopefully fine. eventually. Yeah, well, eventually I'll get up there. There's so many things, mm-hmm. so many just I watched everything. Grey's Anatomy in high school too, but I stopped because um, that show, they love to kill everybody off. I'm telling you, <laughs> it started stressing me out. I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's actually annoying. It's overwhelming because uh-huh. I'm like, who stays, who goes, who just loves who. Don't get attached like, to anybody, ever. 
Oh, no one. <laughs> I I was first attached to Dr. Bailey, but now I'm not. Mm-hmm. And then first I was attached to Meredith, but then I realized she's actually a mess. Uh-huh. So At least I can't, you can trust I can't. that Meredith will probably be okay, you know? Yeah. Like, main character, you're pretty much fine. Everybody else, yeah. fair game for them to kill off, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, forget everybody else. Just care about Meredith. She's the main character. She's uh-huh. the main one. Like, I read that um, the showrunner is like, if Ellen Pompeo is done, I'm done. I was like, oh, oh. okay. Well, yeah, like, so she I wants to quit. That. If honestly, yeah, if she quits, they shouldn't keep doing the show. It's been no. going on long enough already. I don't know what they're <laughs> going to change it into without her. <laughs> it's like Grey's Anatomy. It's about her life. Mm-hmm. You can't change things like that. No. Ugh. TV is weird. Yeah. Do you know what I heard? The On, on uh, Criminal Minds, the guy who plays Aaron Hodgner, the reason that he left is because he kicked somebody on the set. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Apparently Why? he kicked a producer, so they fired him. <laughs> I don't. I can't believe that. I keep like whenever I see him now. When I'm now that I'm rewatching it, I can't get it out of my head. I'm like that guy kicked somebody. That's so <laughs> weird. That so I, weird. Because I'm like, he gets fired for kicking a producer. Well, that's actually awful. But it's kind of. I know it's what? bad, but it's kind of funny. I'm picturing him like kicking yeah. him in the shins. Like it's just something <laughs> about it is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> But the way they kind of played it off in the show, I'm like, oh, makes sense. Easy, because they had the whole, like, you know, stalker person. Oh, and... I see. I haven't even seen that part. I just oh, heard well, that he get... left. Don't worry. You can spoil it. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, well, when you get to the point, it all makes sense. Yeah. And it kind of plays out well. So. Yeah, but apparently he kicked somebody, and that's why he got kicked off. <laughs> kicked off, literally. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> These celebrities, what are they doing? I know. What are you doing kicking people? He had a, he he literally could have stayed on for like another like two seasons. Yeah, but I don't no, know. threw it all away. It's whatever, uh, whatever. Mm. How is your twenty twenty one going so far? Um, you know, it could be worse. Hmm. <laughs> I think okay. I've been struggling a lot with living alone um, during the pandemic, and like I I've always been kind of lonely, you know. But I think especially mm-hmm. now, like I just don't really see anybody, and I I don't really go anywhere and like that part's kind of been rough for me is um just being (laughs) stuck here alone all of the time but it's okay I've gotten more used to it it was a lot harder for me early on but yeah I I've been okay as well I've been like I wanted always when I've always wanted to be alone yeah but I realized that I'm like "Mm, no but like for me I'm I need my personal space but then I also realize I'm basically a human vacuum and I will consume all the food and then like I can't share my food with people yeah it's not gonna work yeah I'm a big introvert I like having my own space too but sometimes it's nice to like interact with a human (laughs) you know yeah that's why I started this podcast to talk to people genius (laughs) it's like making a name for myself and talking to my friends Mm -hmm. because I can't see them in real life yeah that's smart (sighs) and I think that's why twitch is so successful now oh yeah I, it's been Twitch has been such a rock for me to have that like consistency of being live at the same time every day and also like having that social interaction with people on Twitch. It's been very helpful for me. <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh like are you are you a person that would set goals for yourself? Yeah, I've always been a, a goal setter. I think my mom sort of raised me that way. She she was a big goal setter, so she would encourage me to do it too. <laughs> nice, good old Karen. Love her. <laughs> Like, do you have any goals this year that you want to achieve? I don't I don't have any, like, big, big overarching goals, I don't think. But I, I know that I I want to start making more, like, collaborative kind of content on YouTube. I know that you're, you're literally doing it right now um, with making this <laughs> podcast. But I, I want to try and make more, like, collaborative Sims videos. Like, I want to try and do, like, Sims collaborations, like, build battle type stuff. Like, that's kind of what I've been yeah. uh, wanting to start doing. I feel like it's hard to make collaborative Sims content because you mm-hmm. can only do so much. But yeah. I think also like the fact that you collaborate with different people, bounce ideas off of each other also yeah. helps. So I don't know. It's just I it's hard to come up with like new ideas. collab stream like a year ago now um, with a few other Sims streamers. And what we did was we all did the Black and World Challenge in like a squad stream <gasps> together at the same time, Ooh. but didn't show each other. And so we all like made our monitors black and white, tried to build a house black and white, would kind of like pop into the call occasionally to ask questions, but mostly just streamed on our own that like 
hour or whatever challenge. And then at the end, we came back in and then toured each other's to show. It. So we were like showed it black and white and then like turned the color back on and then toured around with people. And it was really, really fun. Oh, to show everyone I love like that. That was a fun idea for Bill a challenge is my favorite one because you never really know what to expect with the colors. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so fun because you, you're you so confident. Like, your build's going to look great. It looks awesome and grayscale. And then you put it in yeah, color. Yeah, it's like, got, like, oh, I want this blue bedroom. <laughs> but it turns out to be magenta. It's like, oh, no. That's mm-hmm. not... Yeah, and you know what? I always go in super confident, too, because I'm like, I know the items. I know the second swatch is green. And then I place it, and I'm wrong, and it's pink. Yeah, and then I have like, a hot well, pink couch. It wouldn't be Classic. the Sims without <laughs> the uncertainty of knowing what every color is, you know? That's what I love about The Sims. It's just so mm-hmm. it's so different. It makes you challenge yourself different ways. I like how creative the community can get with it and like all the different ways yeah. to play. You know? I mean, we're all playing the same game, but like everyone does so many so many cool different things with it. Yeah, because I remember because, you know, was James did where every tile is a – where every tile is a bigger whatever. That challenge. Yeah, every room is one tile bigger Yeah, and then something. you did a twist on it. It's and I'm like, that's a smart idea because, like, it's the most simplest, like, challenge idea, I would say. Mm-hmm. But you all made it make it sound so cool. I'm like, ah, I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> I, think, I think we all just needed, like, some type of, like, challenge or concert or something because we are just out here running dry. Uh-huh. It's hard in between pack yeah. releases. When it's like been a while since an expansion pack and there's not many much news coming out, it's it always gets a little bit like, like oh what no, can we do? what do I do now? <laughs> That's why I always try to think of like, okay, they did it in The Sims 4. Like somebody didn't did it in The Sims 4. Why not just do it in a different game? Because like more of a challenge. Because mm-hmm. I always do it in The Sims 2 because challenging. But it's yeah. like also like what if you could like rebuild something from like another video game like Stardew Valley or like Minecraft or – I think that kind of thing yeah. is so fun. I built the goth house in Minecraft <laughs> I once. remember that. <laughs> it was a whole stream. I remember. Yeah, yeah. It was so bad. It was so ugly. Uh, <laughs> I think that's so fun. Oh, though. yeah. I think it's, like, it's fun to kind of adventure out into, like, new new games and, like, try out in, like, a similar game you're used to and see what the outcome would yeah. be like. Like, I remember... Lizzie, Scott, Joel, and some other people did like this Minecraft challenge where I spent 100 days in Minecraft. And yeah. I'm still currently, <laughs> I'm doing it in The Sims 4, but rags to riches. Steven, I swear to you, I'm doing it right now too. I'm on like day 50. <laughs> it's taking me so long to I'm record. I'm on day four because I'm slow. <laughs> oh. Because I. <laughs> oh no. I. It takes me like. I'm trying to like like power through like do like three times speed a lot because it's taking yeah. me so long. I'll spend like two hours on ten days. Yeah, and that it takes a long time. To it's do definitely this. a lot of work, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's like the whole idea of like figuring out what you want to do with it and how are you going to make it work, and especially yeah, what will the outcome be at the end? Because I'm doing yeah. mine's rags to riches, and I want to be able to get up to like maybe a hundred k or something like that, or. Yeah, achieve the aspiration cool. i think you'll be able oh, yeah. to 100 days is a long time like i've been playing on short lifespan oh in mine and so i'm on like day like 30 something the sim <laughs> died because i started young adult and then he like died of oh. old age on day like 37 so i'll probably get through like two generations which would be kind oh, of fun good. i think well i'm excited yeah. for that video then <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited for yours. It's going to be cool rags to riches style to see like how the house yeah. changes because you're going to have such a way bigger difference at the oh, end. Yeah. You know? I mean, right now I only have a tent and a, a cooler and that's, that's it. <laughs> Ooh, high rollers right? over here. <laughs> Balling. Maybe you can afford a toilet soon. Oh, that'd be lovely. I actually have enough money for a toilet. Gonna... Okay, well, don't brag about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the end of the podcast episode, but I have some rapid fire questions for you. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. What is the best advice you've ever received in your life? Steven, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Um, how deep are we talking? It doesn't be deep. It just be simple. Uh, drink enough water. Smart. <laughs> favorite, animal, favorite Animal Crossing character? Freckles, the duck. Oh, love her. Um, mm-hmm. what recommendations would you give to someone like a book, podcast, TV show, et cetera? Well, personally, I recommend Spring Sims new podcast, Hello Spring. You know, <laughs> great time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but you know what? I've been um I've been rewatching like a bunch of like old HGTV shows on Discovery Plus recently. Um and Fixer Upper, like Chip and Joanna Gaines, they've come back, they're making a new season of it, like right <gasps> now. Oh, good. And there's three episodes on and they're all on Discovery Plus. So that's what I'd recommend mm. is the new season of Fixer Upper. Oh, that's good. And <laughs> do you have anything exciting coming up this year? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> have any exciting plans? <laughs> It's hard to make plans for a year like this one. Who knows what's going to happen? Honestly, um, true. I, I uh, Twitch streaming is my answer. Nice. Love that for you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on my podcast. I honestly just love talking to people and just talking to you. Yeah. Uh, we definitely got to do another well, episode. Steven, thank you for inviting me because I, I have missed you and it's been fun getting to catch up a little bit. Same. So, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, the other thing too. Would you ever relit like relaunch your podcast? <laughs> I don't know. I think about that a lot. Maybe someday. But part of me is like, I stream so much every day. I feel like, what more do I have to say to people? <laughs> I, I feel like I say so much online already. But you're doing it, and you're good at it. So I mean, eventually, I'll probably run out of content as well. Who knows? Yeah, but it helps to have guests on the podcast because, like, they're kind of the content. You know, that's true. Because I can always say so much. Like the first episode is not even out by this time we're recording this. And I talked yeah. for like 40 minutes about whatever. But it's good. Yeah. But it got, it's good. Well, that's what people come for. That's what they want is just nothingness. Like random. It's nice to have like the background noise, you know, and just like to hang out with somebody. Yeah, that's true. So the, the rambling about nothing isn't a bad thing, I don't think. <laughs> oh, good. Because <laughs> I can talk for days. Um, yeah. So where can the people find you? Uh, they can find me everywhere, just at Lil Simsy. But primarily, my platforms are YouTube and Twitch. But I'm also on like Twitter and Instagram and stuff, just at Lil Simsy. That's good. Good way to <laughs> snag the name everywhere. Honestly, yeah, right. <laughs> Lucky, because I honestly am still just like waiting. Like I just submitted my application to get verified on Instagram uh -huh. with like my uh, LLC stuff, and I'm like, can I just oh, yeah. get the name Spring Sims? I hope you can, because you deserve it. I hope I can get it on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter mostly, because the, the two mm -hmm. people on both platforms who have Spring Sims literally, I think, are the same person, but have not been active in over, like, seven years. That's so annoying when that happens. They're just these old inactive accounts that haven't been posted on in seven years, and they steal your name. It's like, <laughs> granted, they, they started the account a year, like, before I did. So, I mean, mm. that makes sense. But I'm like, still, give me the username, please. It's whatever. <laughs> you deserve it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Anywho, well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Hope to see you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you one day in person again when it's yeah, safe. Yeah, maybe one of these days. 2025, possibly. <laughs> Probably. Be safe again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just, I just thought 2025, I will probably be... Oh, gosh, I'll be 29. Oh, no. Oh, my. <laughs> it was like The Sims 6 is coming out. <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> we'll see each other at The Sims 6 launch party, Steven. <laughs> oh, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Love that. We'll, I'll see you there. Definitely reunion time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> So I hope you all enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. I had so much fun talking to Kayla about YouTube, Twitch, social media, personal life versus online life, the 100 baby challenge, the Sims, the charity fundraising, actually why she does charity fundraising and so much more. And if you learned anything from this episode, I surely did. Make sure you leave a review on iTunes if you have one or, you know, can just tweet us, Instagram us or whatever you have for social media to let us know your thoughts because we would love to hear them. And if you want to have her on the podcast again, let me know on socials once more, but make sure you check the show notes for the correct links so you can check her out. But go ahead and follow and subscribe to me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And I will hear from you all next week.